In this episode, we're gonna put all of your images into a folder, zip it up and upload it, and our bots will go and compress and optimize all of your images in an instant. And that is as simple as this episode is going to be. Our bots are gonna do all of that compression for you. What I need you to do is a couple of things. One, we're gonna decide if we're gonna rename your images before we upload them. That way, your content editors will be able to find your images if they search for them. But we can also decide to tag your images. So we can put them into different folders as we upload them and tag them. And when they upload them, they'll automatically be tagged and our users can search via tag as well. So those are two things that we're going to do immediately. And then what we're going to do is show you how you can replace all of the existing images that came with your theme. So we chose a bank of images in the onboarding. Now those images are all over the website. So we can just go and simply replace those images with our new images and your theme will be looking like your brand at the end of this episode. So that's it. Let's get on with it. Let's go and update all of your images right across the website. So here I am in the files area and as you can see I can access this via the main menu and files. And you can see the images that we've uploaded in the logos episode are at the top of our list and here are the images that came with our theme in the onboarding. But we've got a whole bunch of other images in here as well which we might not need. These are the uh, images that came with the Nenshi theme so if I just click these now first off I'm going to decide if I'm going to delete them. Well all of these Im other images, these product images that you'll see there, leave them in for now because you might need those for your e-commerce episode. So just leave them in there now and we'll remove those on day four but I would be quite tempted to clean these up. So the first thing is we can click the tick icon here and we can go to bulk actions and hit delete and then when we delete it's going to make sure that we do want to delete so we hit the delete items in the top and then absolutely yes we do. So now that's going to go and clean up all those images that we don't want. Next I'll give you a quick tour of this files list. Okay, So we can actually search for images, files or documents in here. We can search by keyword or by tag and just hit search and you can put your images into sort order. So often you might want to search via a tag, show me all the images that are tagged with Melbourne Cup, let's say. Okay, so what we will do now is just look at what we've got going on here. Well, we can click on the icon and that will show us the image, it will pop up. We can actually click on the link and that will show us the image in a new tab. And when we can copy the URL there, but we can also copy the URL to a clipboard by pressing the blue link. Now we can see here the dimensions. This is our fave icon that we just uploaded before. It's 600 by 600 pixels. That's very good reference to see there. But we can see this has got an SEO cross tag. Well, what's that mean? Well, let's go into edit. So this is the settings area for this image, what we also refer to as the meta information. And you can see here, it's showing me that this is an image. It could also be a document, a video or audio, but I can actually upload a new image to replace this one here. Now, if I tick yes on here, everywhere that this image exists on the entire website, it will replace it. You don't have to have the images the same name. You can just simply press yes and it will go and find and replace that image with the new one that you upload. Really cool feature and we'll be looking at that later on in this episode. But for now, I just want to draw your attention to the title and alt text. So I'm going to give this a new title because this one doesn't look very nice. If this was going to feed into a photo gallery and you opted to also show the title in that photo gallery, we wouldn't want it to be saying this PNG. So we'll give it a, a title and we can also give it an alt text. Now the alt text is for SEO, what well, SEO is often referred to as alt tag, which you may have heard, it's actually called alternative text, okay? Now this came from, well, became, it was really useful for people who are visually impaired when they have um, a reader 
this would actually tell them what the image is about. So you can actually be quite descriptive in there and of course search engines realize that could help with the description about their image too. So that's why it's important for SEO. So that's all you need to do at this stage is any images that you want in galleries you might want to go and change the name and that's why I'm going to encourage you to change the name before you upload the image as well. Once you've done that you can press save. I'll just draw your attention to the other things that are on this page. Well these are often to do with the widgets. So let's say this image was going in a photo gallery or let's say it was um, a thumbnail for something else and it was feeding in to a widget. Okay, so in this case we'll describe it as a photo gallery where this photo gallery you do want to have a title and a description about the image. Well, you could also give it a date. Um, you could also put it in a sort order of which it appears, maybe the photographer and what we call author, and you could put it into categories. But summary is the one that you might often use. If you decide your photo gallery wants a description of the image, this is where you will put it. Like I say, this isn't often, this information isn't often used for your images. But interestingly, you can um, have a different icon as well. So this can be useful when you upload a video Right, so the video might want a thumbnail. To, so this would be where we use a file icon. More on this later. But I will just draw your attention to the destination URL. Sometimes in your image gallery, you might want to have a link that goes somewhere else, maybe to an internal page within your website. So you can see here, if you wanted to go to a login page in this example, forward slash login or forward slash about us, someone's gonna click on the image, it's gonna to go to the about us page. Or if you want to, it to go to a, a new website, you can put in that destination URL here. Always remember you need the HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash and that will link to a new website, which is a pretty cool feature, but it's an edge case. In fact, all of this is edge case stuff. All I want you to do now is upload, uh, maybe consider changing your title and alt text which is very good at common practice, and then press save. And what you'll see is when we press save is that now our red cross has turned to a blue tick, showing us it's now been optimized for SEO. Now let's upload all of your images. And here you can see we're on my local computer. And what we're gonna do is take some images, we're gonna upload them and let our bots compress them and optimize them in an instant. And you can see here, I've got a whole bunch of images that I've been working on for the Inco theme. And you can see when I name images um, for themes, I always call them image hyphen one, image hyphen two. That's because they're being used in the theme and that's part of the standard images that all themes get. Okay, but that's not great naming convention. So what I want you to think about is naming your images so that future users can find them when they're editing in the platform. But also that also helps your search engine optimization as well. If you've got some descriptive keywords in your image names. So there's two things. One is, up, one is changing the names of your images before you upload them. Um, and the other, when we upload them, we'll put them in tags so that people can find them via tags too. Okay, so you can see here, this particular image, I've downloaded from a website called Unsplash, which you're gonna learn about that at the end of this episode. Well, here you can see it's got the photographer's name and Unsplash, so it's given that particular credit. But on the mobile website, in each theme, you can go to the, the features and FAQs area and you can see the photo credits where you can see the names of uh, and access all the images uh, for the photographer and get the credits there. Okay, so think about giving credits if you're using license free images. So by giving credits, you don't really have to use the name of the photographer. And, and on Splash, because that's not going to give you any benefit. So in this case, I would go in here and I would change this to like, let's call it, you know, image 11 or something like that. But this might be, you know, town in sunset or something like that. But no spaces, use hyphens, um, and then you can capitalize them as you wish. Okay. But now, so that's just naming convention, really good practice, and that's best practice. But what we'll do here is just go and look at the size of this image now. So what I'm gonna do is click Get Info, okay? And you can see that this particular image is over 
five megs. That's a, a whopping high res image. Well, we don't want to have high res images on a website. Again, from an SEO perspective, you're going to get penalized for that. Right, the search engines don't want huge whopping images um, <laughs> on the internet. So, what we, what the mobile system is, is going to do is compress that automatically for you. There's nothing that you need to do. It's going to bring that down below 200 KB, and it's not going to lose any quality of the image, which is absolutely fantastic. In the old days, you might have had to go and change each image one by one, or use a program like Photoshop or Lightroom, something like that, which is quite expensive. So you don't need any extra software. You don't need to pay for any extra software. Mobile are going to compress those for you when you upload them. So what we're going to do now is upload a zip file, right? And when you upload images in bulk on mobile, we need to call that zip file a very exact name. So what we'll do here, I'll just take um, these particular images that we're going to upload so I'm just gonna you know highlight these or I could literally highlight them all you know however you want to do it so you're going to decide which images you're going to upload so I won't upload these okay and what I'm going to do now is put all these into a zip file so I'm just going to on a, on a Mac that's you press compress okay and so on a PC you're going to save it as a as a zip right so in here this is the naming convention if there's any uh, typos in here, it's not going to work. It's not going to compress them. So this is case sensitive, import underscore files, all lowercase. So you're going to name your zip file, import underscore files dot zip. It's probably the most important thing about this episode because everything else is kind of uh, self-explanatory. But here we've got our zip folder. So now I'm going to jump back into the editor. And we're going to upload this and let our bots compress it for us. So here I am back in the files area, which as you already know, it's via the main menu. And then we go to files. Now in the top right here, we can upload new images. Now we can upload images one by one. Okay, so you just simply choose image because we're going to upload an image. Go to your local computer, choose the file and then give it a title and an alt tag press save. So we covered that already. Okay. But in this case, we're going to upload a zip file. So I'm going to open up my local computer. So you can see the images here on my local machine. We've got a zip file, which is 58 megabytes and our image 11, which is over 5,000 pixels wide and five megabytes. Okay. And all the other images that we've selected are here. Now I'll choose this zip file. Now with zip files, just to know that browsers don't really like you uploading files bigger than hundred megabytes. Okay. So a good tactic is when you're uploading files is to put them into different zip files and then we can tag them when we upload them and that will automatically tag them. So we really only have to tag once. So I'll just show you what I mean by this. I'm going to select this file and then I'm going to leave out the title and alt text because we're uploading many images. Okay. And then on the tag here, I'm just going to tag this one. Um, I'll call it Inco images just for now you can change tags later at this point I'm going to press save now while that's uploading that allow about a minute for this page to upload and what that's going to do then is progressively upload and compress all of those images systematically into your files area so you can leave your files area go back and do other things go you know, go and do other things and come back in about five minutes and you'll see that your images have uploaded but if you're impatient you can just hard refresh and just see them all uploading one at a time so that's a top tip there for uploading zip files well let's have a look at our five megabyte image 11 so you can see here it's been uploaded let's click on the thumbnail it's looking pretty good no signs of any pixelation there quite crisp and look at this, it's 192 KB. That's a huge compression and optimized for the search engines. But let's put it to the test. Let's go and have a look at this in the editor. So I'll slide over to the editor. And you can see here one of the images from our Charlie bank of images, which is looking great, really crisp. But let's go and swap it for one of the ones that we've just uploaded. So we'll go to browse. And here in the in the search, I can actually search by the tag. So we tagged it, I think, Inco images. So what I'll do is just start typing in here, Inc, Inc O, and it filters down as we type. Very nice, easy way to search. 
and I'll look at image 11 here let's click that and you can see this image is was a huge portrait but what I've got here is fixed in the background so we've got this cool effect that as we scroll over so even that's a really long image 1440 pixels wide we can still see that's performing brilliantly for our page so that is the power of compression and that's the power of using our bots to do it for you we can just take a folder of images tag them upload them all in one hit and have them compressed and optimized in moments All right, well now let's put those bots to the test some more. And what would be cool is if we got the bots to replace all of the images around our current theme. So let's just go and remind ourselves what images are on the pages. So we'll go up to the top and we'll open up the website with the view website link. So here you can see is my theme work in progress so far. We chose the Nancy theme in the onboarding and we chose the images from the Charlie theme. So you can see that here, here's the images from Charlie and what we want to do now is go and replace these. Could you imagine if we had to go into every page and start swapping these images one by one? Well, we don't need to do that. We've got quite a few pages in here. Let's go to the pages area and let's look where there are a lot of images in the product category. So let's go and choose this one for now. And you can see here, this is actually a slider. Okay, so there's a, quite a few images in here from the Charlie images. And let's scroll down here and we've got these product images here okay so what we'll do now is go back into the files area I'm going to draw your attention to the bot assisted button over here so let's go and click the bot assisted button and you can see here here are all of our demo images look at this these come with the theme so that's what I was saying earlier how why we name these in this way but they're all tagged demo okay so what I'm going to do now is get the bot to go and replace these images so let's just start on image one and notice where we've got replace file here it's checked to yes that's the key thing as long as you've got that checked to yes it will replace this image everywhere every instance on your website and the cool thing is when we do it this way we don't have to rename the images so watch this here we've got the, um, the, the image that I'm going to use for the theme, which is going to be my image one. And you can see this has been downloaded from Unsplash. It's got the photographer's name and says Unsplash. So what I'm going to do here is just click this image. And I'm going to go straight over to press save. Now, pressing save is also not just uploading it, it's also compressing it. So you do want to allow a little bit of time and typically allow about 30 seconds for a five meg image. Okay, and so you can see our image there. And what we've got here is compress it down to 1440 pixels wide, which is excellent, and 177 KB. So that's fantastic now. But the key question is, has that uploaded everywhere on the website? So what we can do is go back up and view the website. And you can see that's now uploaded. But let's go back to our test, which was on the product category page where there was quite a lot of images and let's have a look at this this was our slider and you can see it's also uploaded in the widget as well. well that's pretty cool so what I can do now is jump back into the files area and actually go now and replace all of those images one by one and so now all of my images have been replaced that's lovely so the final thing that we can do now is go back to our theme I'll hit the view website link and as I slide here the slide has been updated but look a guy is still there in the widget well a widget is a dynamic feed so sometimes that might need a little bit of assistance I've actually been on this page before so my browser is remembering the previous version that I had seen if it was a new user um, who'd never been to this page before they would see the new version so at this point, I'll hard refresh again, shift command and R on Chrome. Let's have a look at our slider. It's got all of my new images. And of course, in the widget, that's got all of my images too. So we've just made huge steps there. We've uploaded all of our images in bulk. We've actually gone now and used the bots to replace all the images on the theme. Now we've just had a question, which is, can the replace file feature work on other images? So you've uploaded an image in the future, it's across 25 pages, and you want to go and replace that one image everywhere just in one hit. Well, yes, it works 
just the same way. So here I've just searched hack and I can see this hack event image. If I click edit, you can see that the feature is still there. It's just not uh, pre-selected. Like when, you, when the bot goes to do it for you, yes is pre-selected. But I could simply now go and tick yes, upload a new image, doesn't matter what it's called. When you've got replace file, it always keeps the same name. So it will go and replace those 25 images right the way around the website, saving a lot of time. So this is also a good feature for your content editors to be aware of in the future. So now the only thing to address is what if you need some images? What if you need some inspiration and where to get images? Well, typically you're in one of three camps. Your brand's either got lots of images and you don't need any more. You've either got some images already, but you need to update them a little bit and add a few more images to your collection, or you don't have any images at all. Well, historically in web design, we've relied on stock libraries. So those stock libraries could be free or they could be paid libraries. Well, today we're just gonna look at Unsplash. There's a bit of a mix. There's some free on there, lots of good free stock on there, which are license free. Um, and then some of those you can you can buy. But then there's other libraries, you know, like um, that you've heard of, Getty Images, Adobe Stock, and so on and so forth. You can go and buy those images as well. But I'll also show you the mobile website and where you can go and look at all of the images that we've used for the themes and click a link and then go and download those images as well if you like them. So that's a good level of inspiration there to get some good free images if you don't or can't afford to pay for them. Okay, and then in the session after this, um, we're gonna look at using AI to generate images. So that's a pretty cool technique to learn as we're in 2023 now. The AIs are getting a lot better at generating images. So I'm going to show you a few prompts on how to create images with AI that are totally license free and original. OK, so you can be sure with the AI ones that no one else will be using those. And that's one of the things with stock libraries. You just have to be conscious that other people could be using your images, but you have got that benefit that you get the license from them. So look. We're here on Unsplash. There's loads of stock image libraries. Free ones also like Unsplash, like Pexels. Uh, but then you get the paid ones like Adobe Stock, Getty Images, iStock. So, you know, you don't have to just use Unsplash. Jump onto Google and you'll, you'll be able to search for many, many stock libraries. Okay, so the first thing I'll do here is search. Well, we've got an events website on Alio, so I'll just type events. It's always good to look for people as well right so we'll put in events and people and then these are the images that that, that is filtered in this search now if you recall the alio website that we're building out is blue uh, it's got a bit of sky blue dark blues and then the, the the poppy pink okay so that's what i'm looking for immediately in the images here are there any images that are blue with hints of uh, pinks or, or reds. Well, you can see here this first image that we'll look at. You can see here in the image, in the lady's dress, there's sort of pinks and reds. Um, there's also a bit of blue in the chair and on, on the screen. So that would be a good image to use, right? So I could put that into my collections, like my wish list essentially, by hidden the heart. But then in the bottom right, I could also hit the download button and that's gonna download it to my um, computer and it also says that you can say thanks to the photographer here as well uh, you'll notice throughout this video every time we've used stock images we've tried to show where that image has come from like who, who took the photo to give that person credit but we also do that on the mobile website as well and this is where you can access all of our themes but you can also drill deeper into the themes to see the collections that we've used. So if you like some of these images, you can use them yourself. And then here you can see our photography credits. Click in the link, you go back to Unsplash, and this is where you can see the entire collection for the Alio theme, where you can now download the images. And remember that when, we, when I downloaded the, these images, they were about five meg and 5,000 pixels wide. Well, you're going to get that high res one and then of course as you upload it our bots will compress it for you okay so where is this page 
on the mobile website well look if you just click the built by you button in the top and click themes that's when you can see all of the themes okay and you can sort of browse through these and get a feel for what those image collections are okay so that's a wrap for this episode and we'll be on to the next episode where we start to look at using ais to generate images for us